Athens, Missouri. ESPN proudly presents live coverage of the PBA Tour, the second stop on the march to the PBA World Championship. Now let's meet our five finalists. First from Temecula, California. His four career wins include two PBA Touring Players Championships, Dennis Horan. He finished second in last season's PBA World Rankings, a five-time PBA champion, and the winner of this year's Invitational Japan Cup, a product of Wichita State University, Chris Barnes. From Ann Arbor, Michigan, by way of Finland, his two career wins both came in majors. They call him Major Mika, Mika Koivuniemi. His one career PBA title came in 1992 in the 30th ranked bowler on last season's tour. From Amarillo, Texas, it's Mike Scroggins. A two-time PBA Player of the Year. He won his 20th career title last season. The last bowler to shoot 300 on television from Claremont, Florida, Norm Dude. That is the final five from Blue Springs, Missouri. Randy Peterson, let's look at the brackets. A couple lefties today. Well, that's right, Dave Ryan. The wild card match is a rematch of last night's hard-fought round of eight battle as Dennis Horan takes on Chris Barnes. In semifinal number one, the left-handed Mike Scroggins takes on Mika Koivuniemi, who has won titles in 10 different countries in his career. And Norm Duke, who finished third in the world rankings last season, waits for the wild card winner in semifinal number two. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, our entire ESPN PBA crew with you from Blue Springs, Missouri. For a second straight year, it's a great facility, Lunar Bowl. You're just about 20 minutes or so from downtown Kansas City. As we said, lefties, get it going. Little split on lane 23 for nice Horan. Huh? <laughs> Sounded like the ball bounced as it entered the heads, the front part of the lane, and this ball just overhooks in the back end. And not a very good break to start the match for Dennis Horan. 45th on the tour last year in terms of average to 12.50. Did not make a TV appearance all of last season. Now he's split, and then he'll leave the 6'10 early. Exactly the opposite of what he wanted to have happen to begin his day. Yeah, and you know, that's kind of a, a tough split because if you go for it and you miss the two pin, you get seven. So sometimes, you know, you wonder, well, should I go for it or should I just try to get the count and go for the 6'10? That's Chris Barnes. Right of the head pin there, another split to deal with. There's the 10 all the way over on the right side of the deck. 2 4 8 10 for Chris Barnes, and in their match last night, it was split central. Nine splits total, only one of them made by Chris Barnes, and this was the only one that he made. Barnes won that match in the best of seven for the and he chips out the 10 beautifully down on the split. What a mark, Chris Barnes. Covered it perfectly, Dave. You got to get the ball to hook right of the two pin. It throws the two and the eight into the ten. Softer speed, big hand, and a conversion. What a start. And you know the momentum has drastically swung so early in this wild card match. In the pocket. He saw a ten pin for Barnes. He wanted that one, certainly. Baby Ruth, real deal matchup, Randy. We see games bold so far by the two. The averages are very close. And the one thing that really stands out is a four pin, almost a five pin, a game average, Chris Barnes' favor. Square ball, 10 pin. Picks up his mark. This has his wife, Linda, and the twin boys, Ryan Phillip, Troy Christopher, are in the center. They're not really watching closely because they're just very young. <laughs> you see the wild card numbers and the highest qualifying pinfall through the 18 games of qualifying. So, really threatens to go on that channel left. Hustle back to the pocket. But he knew coming into the round of eight that he would be in the wild card because of his high qualifying numbers. And Dennis Ranch just happy that this ball stayed on the lane surface. Wow. That was way left. 
fortunate to only leave the three pit. The numbers, they'll gladly take that. They're on oil pattern D as Randy will break down coming up in a few moments. You'll see the early score in our wild card match. Greater KC Classic. For the most part, the bowlers tell us the straight line is better on this pattern. One reason Norm Duke had such success this week. Yeah, I agree. And Dennis Rand just switched bowling balls looking for something different. Come on, ball! Certainly better ball in the pocket, but the 10-pin stands. Dennis told me that he was using really strong equipment, high friction equipment, and he was just basically taking the hit out, letting the ball do all the work, keeping his hand underneath it so he could control the directional change down the lane. A lot of work on his game. Top finish last year, sixth place. In Orlando, just missed making this show. Barnes a 12 and 7 record overall in match play, 218, 9 and 7 average. There is match wins this week. Did go seven games, the max, all match play now. Out of 32 to go, of eight, his best of seven. Another 10 pin, Chris Barnes. Big swing and 10 right there. The six just wraps around it. You want to be a professional and be successful on our tour, make your spares. One missed single pin conversion this week. Out of our five guys. Yeah. Man will have a look at it. And Barnes finishes out the mark, but still, we play just ran for a second. Unusual to get this far into any match on TV. Well, live coverage of the PBA Tour from Lunar Bowl in Blue Springs, Missouri. We're outside Kansas City, and Barnes, an 11 pin lead, works on a spare. Chris Barnes was just asking for a re rec, but that has to be your first first order of business once you come off the lane or when you step up to the bar return. Another 10 pin. Hard to believe this string of solid 10 pins that Barnes has had. Well, you left two vicious ringing 10s. This is going to be a flat 10. Watch the 6 pin, second to the right, next to the 10. It's going to go to the sidewall and just lay there. It tapped it. Not enough to knock it down. And with the spare ball, Barnes takes care of that. Please. His goal is to be named the PBA Player of the Year. He did just about everything last year except surpass Walter Ray Williams Jr. Great season for Barnes, making all those shows. Five, and we had a six and four record and one in Dallas. Yeah, well, if Walter Ray didn't bowl last year, Chris was probably a lock mm. for a player of the year, but was he ever? nobody was going to touch Walter Ray Williams Jr. <laughs> to the lefty, had to really Chris. hustle in to the pocket and not enough. Want you to, want you to show something very unique. Dennis Horan does not look at a target on the floor. He doesn't look at arrows or dots. He actually picks the reflection of the pins down the lane. Somewhere around the seven pin, maybe five to ten feet in front of it. And then he adjusts his feet accordingly. Couldn't cover the seven pin there in a second open frame for Dennis Moran. That may prove to be fatal here against the proficient Chris Barnes. You know, the reason why Dennis does that, he told me that it helps him to get through each and every shot clean. He doesn't grab the ball at the bottom. It helps him to extend to his target, has the hand and the arm going into the direction he wants the ball to go in. Best ball today for him without question. And our first strike. Finally a strike and a nice crowd <laughs> responds to Dennis Aran Jr. with a high five. Finally some emotion in the positive direction for him. Oh, thank you. A strike. Not some ugly design. Barnes on lane 24. They trip to the seven. There it goes. And finally, the bowlers are figuring out this pattern. Back-to-back -back strikes re from Horan and from Barnes. And once again, Chris calls for the re -rack. And it was his first order of business, so mm -hmm. he's going to get it. But you see what he did last year. Three seconds and finally a win in Dallas the days in open also appeared in Japan on TV 
We lost to Robert Smith. That was very early in the season last September. And this year has won in Japan, but that was the Invitational. So although he takes home the big check, does not get the exemption for next year. That was a 16-man Invitational last field. One. Yeah, it's kind of like the Tournament of Champions. Mm. It's uh, Invitational only. Although the Tournament of Champions does give you a two-year exemption for next year. Chris Barnes would like to take care of business right now. Remember, folks, pressure for every single event here. The Bowlers trying to win exemption for next year's tour. Yeah! Perfect ball. Yes! Threads the rack. 60 feet to success for Chris Barnes. Back-to-back -back strikes. And he has got a 36-can lead in a wild card match. We'll finish it up when we come back and talk about the tricky oil pattern as well. Does it favor a straight-on attack? Toward the head pin. We'll talk about it next. Today's live coverage of the PBA Greater Kansas City Classic on ESPN is brought to you by New Odor Readers Plus, the only art supporting insole that protects against odor and wetness. By Geico, a 15 minute phone call can save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Dexter, bowling, golf, and casual, we have the right shoe for you. It is a gorgeous day outside in the Kansas City area. Look at Rotary Park at Railroad Lake, a beautiful 12-acre park with jogging and biking trails. And a wild card match through frames you see. Chris Rand Jr. is in trouble. A couple open frames. Chris Barnes at 257 max score. And Randy Peterson, speaking of max scores last year, Tacoma, Washington. Who could forget it? Norm Duke, we'll see later today the 300 game on TV. Yeah, it was a beautiful thing to watch. And the winner of this wild, wild card match gets the dubious distinction of facing Norm Duke in the second semifinal. But Norm Duke did perfection in Tacoma, Washington last year against the number one player in the world. Norm Duke's going to be playing a similar line than he played in Tacoma, the extreme outside part of the lane. The left-handers are going to be on the same side on their uh, outside on their side. Chris Barnes, we see that he has been moving in because the right side is getting drier. He moves left and he uses his power to his advantage. For more detailed information about the PBA's oil patterns and for all the latest news and info on the PBA Tour, PBA Senior Tour, and PBA Regional Tours, log on to the PBA's official website at www.pba.com. Sixth frame, Dennis Horan Jr. in a huge hole, as we showed you a moment ago on that statistic. Two opens, and there it goes. Boy, he's flirting with that channel. And he was on the verge of four. This time, he's in it. Well, we saw it get real close to the edge. That one shot, this ball doesn't stay on. We saw a gutter ball last week by Lonnie Wallachek. And with Dennis Horan working on a strike, he could have cut the lead to 16. Instead, he needs a mark. Makes a nice adjustment. Back to Barnes, lane 24. Perfect shot again, Chris Barnes. And you can see the adjustments from each bowlers now as the lane oil pattern starts to develop and also evolve, each making the correct adjustments now. Yeah, and the load of the oil up front was very thin this week, and that was the first part of the lane to break down. That's why the players had to move all over the lane and make big moves at times. Looks here for a four-bagger. Any chance for a 56-pin lead? <laughs> Got it! And the emotion from Chris Barnes. We are used to seeing him on TV. Talking to the pin deck. And with the Looking down the lanes. 
excuse me, Dave Ryan, with the exception of Chris's first frame, the last seven shots have been perfect. And a double wood. And three in the nine now for Dennis Horan. Make sure that we say hello to daughter Courtney and his wife Terry back home in Temecula, California, in Southern California, not far from where you grew up. Not far from Dennis, California. Well, Dave, it looks to me like Dennis just does not feel comfortable, doesn't look comfortable at all. $40,000 to the winner. Fifth place gets the $9,000. See the points on the line as well. Doubles are awarded for majors. Our first the TOC in December in Uncasville, Connecticut. At the Mohegan Sun. Great shot, lane 23 from Horan. And of course, the exemption for the victor is such a huge aspect of our tour this season. I talked with Robert Smith last night. He won last week in Omaha. And he said, yeah, it's great to win. But I'm not going to lay up the rest of the season. I've got to keep my momentum going. Sure, now the rest of the year is all gravy. Hoping for a late help on the 10 pin. That's been great news. <laughs> well, he's doing what he has to do now is keep the ball on the lane, keep it in play. Chris Barnes is your winner. Just a beautiful Chris Barnes release. Great balance with the foul line. That broke his streak of four straight strikes. He had the most strikes on the PBA Tour last season with 1,220. And looking ahead, he'll take on Norm Duke, who's won 20 titles. Head to head, those are the numbers. Chris Barnes making a ball change here. He knows the match is over. Looking for a little something different in terms of reaction. Wow! That was a slaughter. Mike Scroggins on the left. He left he against Mika Koivuniemi. From Finland, now lives in Ann Arbor, Michigan. That is coming up next. Yes. She's getting out of the way. Yeah. This will wrap things up for Dennis Horan. Capping off a great week. <laughs> great week for Dennis Horan. You know, it's, it's not a real good feeling when you bowl that well all week long. And then you, you do what Dennis just did. But he'll rebound. He's going to have a great year. Dennis Horan telling us he's worked a lot on how he was drifting to the right on his approach. A very good week for him. All his adjustments certainly paid off, but against Chris Barnes, the open frames get him in. Barnes advances to take on Norm Duke. When we return, we'll talk about some more legends in the game, like Mark Roth, and flashback to one of his great moments. And the big pin, Mika Koivunyemi against the left-hander, Mike Scroggins. The semis yeah. next. The 1975 King Louis Open in Overland Park, Kansas, was the site of something special. Not only would Mark Roth win his first ever PBA yeah, Tour title there, he did it in style, blowing 11 straight strikes to start off the championship match, hoping for perfection. He's got everybody standing up. He's going for number 12. Please, Mark. This is it. There he goes. We see the success We're winning for the first time in the Kansas City area as we are back in this KC area, a 28th time of PBA Tour, just the second though in the state of Missouri. They call him Major Mika, Mika for the Yemis. We saw Dennis Horan struggle a bit with some open frames in his first match. Anything you learned from watching that, adjustments you'll make? I did not watch the last match, so I was just practicing. Okay, and the lane pattern, the way the oil works with lane uh, pattern D, is that good for your game? Uh, it helps me because I can throw hard and straight. How do you say good luck in bowling in Finnish? Onnea keila, Mise. Ren, did you get that? He's ready to go. and that's loft. There's two ways to control direction. One is with ball speed, the other was, is with loft. Mika does both. 
So when the lanes dry up, instead of moving, he goes to his strength, he starts to throw it faster, and he lofts it. Something to watch for. You hear that ball hitting the lane, he can really launch it. We'll see if Mike Scroggins has a better ball reaction than Dennis Rahn had. Seven pin stands for Mike Scroggins. Are you sure that's what he said? I think so. <laughs> I trust him completely. Okay. He's a great guy, right? Yes, he, he is. He wouldn't steer us wrong. No. <laughs> the only other Finnish word I know is latte. You'll hear Mika say that when the ball is getting ready to hit the pocket. That means carry. Carry. <laughs> Seven pin, spare ball. And Mike Scroggins from Amarillo, Texas, the left hander, takes care of it. Launch point for Mika Koivu Nebi. Because of his height, about 6'4, six, 6'4. Four, six, four. Extraordinary. What a wingspan this guy has got. 6'4 and a really high backswing. Really chucks the ball deep down the lane. Upon release, just that natural release point. The Baby Ruth real deal matchup head to head. The strike percentage number is fairly tight. Spare conversion in favor of Strogan. Mike Strogan's out average Mika. And he made more spares than Mika did. Higher strike percentage. He got there more often. And this is, uh, especially on this lane pattern D, this is a pretty good stat here. 60 consecutive frames without an open. Last night, Mika had an awesome match against Michael Haugen. He did three in the attempt to win, and he threw three just like that. What power and what a start from Mika Koivu Nyemi. Now, because he's 6'4", he doesn't have a big knee bend, so he automatically has a higher launch angle than anybody else. He lets go of it higher off the lane. And his reaction, he liked that shot. 217 average last year on tour, 12th best. Yeah. Scroggins. And the southpaw finds the pocket nicely. We do have two lefties in our final five, which is always interesting. As we see the match wins this week for him. Win over Brian Himmler in six. Roommate of Dennis Horan. Nice week for Himmler as well. Yeah, Brian had a great week. Said to uh, tell everybody back in Cincinnati that he's back. He, <laughs> he's, he hasn't gotten lost. And Brian did something this week he has, I haven't seen him do in a long time. He went real straight and direct like everybody else did. <laughs> Hugging the channel to the left and leaves a difficult spare here with a split. Nice steady head of Mike Scroggins. And that shot to me appeared to be too fast. Ball never gripped the lane, leaving the washout. 92%. Only missed one multi spare conversion. Difficult spare. And pin wow. stays up. Mm. Ah. Well, he needed to catch a piece of the head pin. This ball was just pulled. Still gets nine. Now Mika can take an early commanding lead with a strike here. It'll be 32 pins. Ah. Didn't like it at all. Okay. Right Dead through yanked. the nose. And he was very displeased upon release. Dead yanked it immediately off his hand. As soon as he lets go, watch him turn his head. That's what happens when you get a little bit too pumped up and a little bit too aggressive. And he had started with back-to-back -back strikes. There's the split conversion rate. It was 15.3. Get the ball to the right side of the three pin. Pull him up. Ten. That wasn't finish. What did he say? <laughs> it wasn't carry. It wasn't left game. No. What did he say, Dave? I'm to ask my buddy Tamu Solani of the Colorado Avalanche. NHL star. He is friends with Tamu, he told us, today before the match, and has bowled with him in some celebrity events back home. Although Mika has not been to Finland over two years. He traveled around different parts of Europe and the world in the offseason. A lot of different appearances, bowling some regionals. Perfect ball. Reds the rack. Right in the pocket for Corbin Emmy. 
talking with Mika about the top 50 all exempt tour next year. Actually, it's the top 64. He told me that he's never worked harder in the off season. He got in better shape. He's running about five miles, five days a week. Oh, it looks great. And yeah, no he actually does. He looks like he's lost weight. And he says he's giving it everything he's got. That straight ball from Struggins. He's struck down the second and fourth range. We are coming to you from Lunar Bowl, Blue Springs, Missouri. Greater KC Classic, Dave Ryan. Randy Peters, our PBA coverage continues live from just outside Kansas City. Next week we go to Chicagoland, Miller High Life Open, 1 o'clock Eastern Time here on ESPN as the PBA Tour continues. 10 on the West Coast, don't miss the best bowlers in the world in Vernon Hills, Illinois, near Chicago. For more, log on to ESPN.com. It's exciting bowling there last year. Carrick. Yeah. Indeed, indeed, Carrick. Yeah, a much better shot. It looked like the shot that he washed out on was just a little bit left of that. This ball looks a little bit more direct. And this one's perfect in the one, two. He's got Koizu Nyemi, who ended up in Ann Arbor, he tells us, because large Finnish population there. So he felt at home. He and his wife, Lina, his daughters, Ida and Lydia. And a big ball from Mika Koizu Nyemi. He told us today he's not sure if his wife, Lena, will be watching on TV because she gets so nervous and superstitious when he makes the show. She's watching. Come <laughs> on. Meek also told me that along with his training regimen, he switched to 15 pounds. And it's amazing how strong these new bowling balls are because he hasn't lost any hitting power. That ball got to the 1-3, the 6 kicks the 10 out. Eight pins in the mark in the third. Otherwise, he has struck. First, second, fourth, and fifth. Career numbers on TV, under the bright lights for Mika. That's a big average, too, because normally your first your first couple of shows, you always shoot 150. Nervous, right? Absolutely. Adjustment to the bright lights on the oil pattern. He did say that his wife, Lena, will not invite anyone over, that's for sure, on any day that Mika is bowling on TV. But I agree with you. I think the family's watching pretty closely. Shouldn't you have like a party or something? Have all the neighbors over and and hooting and hollering for you and getting behind you? And I mean, that's just me, though. I, you know how I am. Mika and Lena speak Finnish to daughters Ida and Lydia. But outside the house, the kids speak English almost exclusively. Great to have the bilingual aspect of their lives. Big advantage, without question. And Finnish is a tough language, too. Boy, would you have me in great shape. We'll see how other bowlers have fared here at the Greater KC Classic Lunar Bowl in Blue Springs, Missouri. More this match on the way as well. First time head-to-head -head between Scoggins and Koibu Nyemi on TV. We come here from the Lunar Bowl in Blue Springs, Missouri. Plenty of support for Chris Barnes, who bowled collegially at Wichita State. And our Dexter approach is Major Mika. Major Mika, six foot four frame. Look at the height of that backswing. And there's one thing that's critical that Mika must do because of the height of his backswing. He has to maintain this body position here. He can't let that upper body get too far forward. Otherwise, the swing gets too steep and he'll grab it at the bottom. And here's the one thing that Mika does better than anybody out on tour, man. He can really heave it. Look at how far out on the lane that goes. This week's Dexter approach with Mika Koihunemi from Tambere, Finland, where he grew up just about half a block from uh, Ice Hockey Arena. Hockey is the big name there, big sport without question. Through six, the numbers. And even though Mike Scrog Scroggins opened in the third, if he strikes out, there's no way Mika can beat it. Yeah! Big ball there from Mike Scroggins. See, he's wearing that big brace on the left hand there. That's a storm extra roll for stability. Used to wear one a lot smaller, so he's changed the brace this year. Keep his wrist nice and firm so it doesn't move around at release. Makes his release much more consistent. 
And this week he told me he's starting with his hand more on the side of the ball as opposed to underneath it. And the one thing that he wanted to eliminate was getting the ball to go to the left. By keeping your hand on the other side, it's going to go straighter. And that time, again, just looks like really bad off his hand. 1-3 and the 7 up for him. Same exact thing he left in the third frame without the six pin. Ball just never bites, leaving the washout. Had he struck there, it would have been a four bagger and a one pin lead. So the match stays tight. With the spare ball, again, trying to knock out a difficult spare, leaves the seven. Oh, man. And an open frame, as was the case in the third for Mike Scroggins. I talked to Mike Scroggins before the telecast, asked him. Do you have a good look? Do you have a good shot? He said, yes, I do. He just made the comment he has hang now on the left lane. What does that mean for him? Well, that means that he better not throw it to the left. That means he's got to be real, real precise and perfect on the left lane. Big finish for the big pin, Mika Koibunemi. As we told you earlier, other scores from the top bowlers in the world here the Greater KC Classic Lunar Bowl. We'll catch up with those in a moment. Michael Haugen Jr. had that great appearance out in California at the U.S. Open last year. And we mentioned Brian Himmler's week. Brian Himmler had a nice week. Rick Steelsmith had a great match. Came down to the 10th frame of the sixth game. Get it, yeah. More finish. We've got to get our definitions the next time he's on TV. Uh, yeah, I got to get more words. But <laughs> I was trying to tell you about the match that Rick Steelsmith had against against Norm Duke. Brian Goble from uh, Shawnee, Kansas, not too far away. And Amleto Monacelli, my buddy from Venezuela, the only foreign Hall of Famer. Ah, yeah, to be inducted on the PBA tour. Mika Koivu never would like to join those ranks someday. Max score is possible now between these two. I think I know what Mika said. Okay. You know, why can't I trip a four pin for a change? <laughs> Scrog is at 223 right now. A tight match. Neither bowler wants to take command. Another split. What was that? Four, seven, ten. Mm. What was that? Well, he doesn't have the friction on the left lane, but he sure has it on the right lane. Watch this ball cut right through the heart. Four, seven, ten, and it's like he can't believe it. Thought it was really good off his hand. Similar to Mike's reaction, I'm sure, when the Red Sox lost to the Yankees in the ALCS in Game 7. Oop. Another open for him. He's good buddies with John Burkett. Oh, right hander of the Red Sox. They met in 1992 in Sacramento when Mike Scroggins won his last title. His TV debut. Burkett was pitching for the Giants, Mike told us before the show today. And now Burkett lives in the Dallas area, so he and Mike are in contact a couple times a year and go on bowling outings. John Burkett, big time bowling fan. And an active participant. There's a seven pin for Mike. Oh, missed that one. John Burkett, also a really good bowler, and actually participated in a PVA event. Right now, Mike is having a little trouble getting the ball of the one three, and then or the one two, and when he does get there, it doesn't strike. Messenger going in front of the seven pin on that shot. Turns away from the mark of the seven pin. Two of the top bowlers in our sport, without question, superstars. Chris Barnes, Norm Duke, semifinal. Number two is coming up after this one complete. Last year, of course, as Randy mentioned, Walter A. Williams Jr. ran away with the Tour Player of the Year honors. But not far behind with Barnes and Duke. That's enough. That's English. <laughs> that I understood. With a spare here in an open frame in the 10th, Mika's going to be in the 200s. The best Mike Scroggins can shoot is 191. So first things first, convert the four pin, and then just keep it on the lane in the 10th frame. Blisters the ball right down the lane for that four pin spare. And 
now Mika just needs three pins for a victory to advance on to the next round. The finals. In search of another title. He's one, two, they're both majors. I'd like to try winning a non-major. Today, for starters, gain an exemption for next season. Winner, winner. And he is in the finals. Gets a little light. Says, oh, just leave me something I can make. Well, instead, he trips the two-pin. And that's all she wrote. Major Mika. I call him that, of course, because he's won the two majors as his titles. That could all change, though, here today in greater Kansas City. If he gets himself a victory in this, the second tour stop of our brand new season. Opening day last week, Robert Smith so impressive in Omaha. And new history being made today. You know, I crossed with Mika in the second round of qualifying. He bowled so good last week, finished 18th, but he was the second high qualifier. And that just carried over into this week. One more. He knows he'll be in the title match. One thing's for certain, he's in the title match, and he's going to go up against somebody that's all world. It's either going to be Chris Barnes or Norm Duke. So he's going to have his hands full. Mika already, man, he has surpassed his TV output from last year. He made one show, U.S. Open, and he lost. He was 0-1 after shooting a 220 that day. Mika talking to family back home in Ann Arbor. We're sure Lena's watching. See, he should have looked in the camera and said something and finished. Exactly. At least the kids should be tuned in. So already he'll have at least two matches on TV. That's better than all of last year in one day here in Blue Springs, Missouri. All right. Good shot, Mike. 31 since the last title. One of his two majors for Major Mika. Scroggins finishing up. This semifinal is over. Mika Kordinemi over Scroggins, 261 The powerful pin is off to the finals. Scroggins' run falls short. He can launch the ball down the lane. Expression as well. Today's live coverage of the PBA Greater Kansas City Classic on ESPN is brought to you by New Odor Readers Plus, the only art support again, so that protects against odor and wetness. By Cambridge Credit Counseling, log on to nodep.com and find out how good it feels to be debt-free. And by the official candy bar of the PBA, Baby Root from Nestle, the real deal. Spectacular autumn day in Blue Springs, Missouri. Look at Adams Point Conference Center. A sculpture unveiled in July of last year. First public major work of art in Blue Springs. Special thanks to Ron Fowler, Blue Springs Mayor Pro Tem, for making a special appearance with us here today at Lunar Bowl. Let's go to this week's Miller Milestones. The subject, Brian Goble. It was a day that you don't want to have end. I mean, it's just too many exciting things and you're really the focus of the whole day. Everybody that knows who I am and bowls with me and everything came to watch that week. For the first time in my life, I, I, I really heard what I hear every time Walter Ray Williams bowls and, and Pete Weber bowls and Norm Duke bowls. And I couldn't believe it was loud for me, but I tried real hard not to let that type of pressure get to me. But the better I bowled as the week went on, the more I wanted to do, even better. You know, the more I didn't want it to end. I had a pretty nice career, and I was in the top five on tour, 94 through 96, and then my daughter started school. And priorities changed a little for me. In the fall of 98, you know, I, I worked harder than I'd ever worked, I think, in my entire career trying to get back to the top, but I don't think anybody around me really thought, after about a two-year drought, that I was gonna win again. Talk about hard to block it all out and focus on the bowling. But I don't know how I did it, but I did. I hate to say it, but I'm the last right-hander to win the tournament. <laughs> I'm the last bowler to win it besides Jason. So I want to go back and try to beat him.
In this week's Miller Milestones. And I'm sure that Gobel will never forget January 12th of last year. winning in Midford as well. Norm Duke, major championships. Look at what he's racked up in his great career. As you can see, he'll be talking with Randy when we return to Blue Springs, Missouri. Another semifinal to see who takes on Mika Koibunyemi. Two of the game superstars, Barnes, Duke, next. At the 1980 King Louis Open in Overland Park, Kansas, Nelson Bo Burton Jr. qualified fifth. He would win three matches and work his way up the ladder to meet tournament leader Ernie Schlegel in the championship match. Schlegel would defeat Burton 246 to 214. Get rid of the ball. And just as Mark Roth did back in 1975, he'd make his first ever PBA Tour title, the King Louis Open. Ernie Schlegel winning in these parts. Patrick Haley Jr. won in this center a year ago, but he's not in our TV show. Perhaps it'll be Norm Duke a winner. He's joined now by Randy. Dave Ryan, on Friday, Norm Duke gave a souvenir bowling ball to a young fan. But on Saturday, Norm, you had to find that young fan and get that ball back. What happened? Well, I just inadvertently gave him my setup ball. So the next day I came in, I said, you know, do you still have it? He said, he just turned white. He said, well, Norm, I took it out practicing last night, and I carved all the holes, made it fit my hand. And I said, well, forget about it. So then he brings the ball back anyway and says, you know, try it if you like. And it fit like a glove. So I'm going to have him work all my balls out now. Thanks a lot, Norm. Good luck. You know, Dave Ryan, that ball normally retails for about $200 in a pro shop, but with a couple of wins today, that ball could be worth about $40,000. That's right. Semifinals and the finals. There's a the young man right there. <laughs> he looks great. Suit and tie. I'm sure Norm took care of him as well. What a very nice souvenir in exchange for the setup ball back. I see Norm on TV does a lot of handiwork with his ball. As he's competing, lots of adjustments going on. Barnes, trying to stay hot. On lane 23, he does just that. Dave Ryan, that's a ball change by Chris Barnes, and he also moved further left. Well, if it wasn't for the great bowling of Walter Ray Williams Jr. and Chris Barnes last year, Norm Duke had a good shot at Player of the Year. Also, as we've seen today, an outstanding season. It's back on TV in our second twist up. Off to a great start, Norm Duke. Likes that straight approach at the head pin and on pattern D, it could be an advantage. Baby Ruth, real deal for this matchup, Randy. Excuse me, Dave, and no, uh, nothing new here. Norm Duke throwing a lot of strikes. The higher average for Norm. And Norm Duke was the only player in our five guys to actually miss a single pin spare this week. The rest of the field, just 57 compared to Norm Duke's 77 appearances on television. Four pin up there. It was fourth last year in earnings, 145,000. Cashed at 20 of 22 events, so he was very consistent. You know, the one interesting thing about this match is both players, Norm and Chris Barnes, neither one of them cashed last week. This week, both of them are on the show. Norm's having uh, some footing issues. And no, those aren't Dexter's. Actually, today was showing me his shoes, how comfortable they are on the top. Norm do specials, he called them. Felt very good about them, but maybe on the approach, a little slipping issue. And I saw in practice that he was having some issues, but it was just that left lane. Barnes goes for a double. Chance for an early 10-pin lead. Second frame. Lane 24. Tonight here on ESPN, don't miss a special encore presentation of ESPN Original Entertainment's critically acclaimed drama, Playmakers. Catch up 
on the action from the beginning with episodes one and two beginning at nine Eastern, six on the West Coast. Playmakers also available on ESPN High Definition. Call your cable operator today or Direct TV, the Dish Network today as well. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Maybe the only tour stop Linda Barnes gets to with the twins because Chris's mom lives in Topeka, so they drove from their home in Dallas. He told me before the show today to Topeka. That's where they're kind of based for the week, about an hour from here. And Linda has her hands full with 17-month-old twins. Rugged Ryan and Tiny Troy, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> <laughs> they're so cute. <laughs> Linda's getting a break. The youngsters are here in the center. They're being watched by someone. And there's no mistake about this. This was a poorly thrown shot by Chris Barnes, and he'll be the first to admit it. You could tell just by his reaction. Didn't throw it well. Note the bobbleheads there in the back. Chris Barnes bobbleheads. There it is. <laughs> you know you've made it big. And he's got the Team USA shirt as well, the bobblehead. Covers. Barely covered the 3 6. Is, is there a ready Peterson bobblehead? No. Thank you. <laughs> Watch this. Uh-oh, hang on. Whew. Such expression. One of the most demonstrative bowlers we've got on tour. Always fun to watch Chris Barnes on TV. He was cranking his hand to get that back in the pocket. It just heard the last moment enough to take care of that strike. Almost came in light. He was turning the wheel to try to get that ball to go left. Come here. Watch this. Come on. Turn ball. Oh, thank you for the mixing action. Why does Norm work on his ball so much in the middle of a TV show? You know, I don't know, but he does it throughout the tournament. I mean, he's constantly changing tape, and, and I don't know if his thumb goes down or if it swells. You know, a lot of people, when they start bowling, their thumb starts to swell, depending on the environment in the bowling center, if it's real humid, if it's, if it's cool. But Norm, just for, for whatever reason, he's constantly fiddling. He is always searching for that perfect feel. Strike here, two pin lead for Duke. Who does it? That came this year. Chuck in three or four frames. You know, the one thing that I really love about watching Norm Duke's <laughs> game is, is how solid and steady his head and upper body is. Watch this. When he hits the foul line, I mean, nothing moves. And look at those eyes just glaring at the target. Got to have a steady head to see your target and see the ball roll over it. Always a steady approach. So technically sound as Chris Barnes just eases into the approach upon release. Oh yeah, I mean he's, you know, he's another one of those guys out of that same mold. Chris's game obviously a little bit different, a little bit higher backswing. But I think the real interesting thing to watch right now, Norm Duke's going much straighter. Chris Barnes is much deeper, going around the uh, lane condition more. His hands more off the side. Norm Duke is more up the back. Great match play numbers from Barnes, we saw. Try to continue that today. Ten pin won't get help. Pushed it through. Yes, it did. It, and what's he, what he means by that is it pushed right through the break point. He needed that ball to start hooking about three feet sooner. You know, in, in being in on tour and being in the situation, you know, you, you can't help but ask yourself, well, what went high the last shot on the left lane? And somehow that factors into your thinking process when you get back on that lane. And so, of course, that one goes further right. Chance for a third straight strike here. Norm Duke, fifth frame for him. If he does strike, a 12-pin lead on Barnes. Right at the head pin, attacks it perfectly on this lane pattern D. And he does strike. Last night, Dave Ryan, when I asked Norm about not cashing last week and making the show this week, he said, Randy, sometimes you need to be humbled in order to perform your best. And then he said after that, quote, sometimes you just have to make things happen. Well, he's making it happen right now. Breakdown number so far, 280 max for Duke. His father, David, is here in the building, but he's too nervous to watch in the arena, so he's watching on TV in the back here. Oh, seven pin. That's what Dave just ah. said. Not real happy with the way it left his hand, but you see, he, the difference between a Norm Duke and a guy that's in the, the, the top 50 or 60, I mean, Norm's the top three or four on this tour. When Norm makes a bad shot, the ball still gets to the pocket. 
when I make a bad shot, it's nowhere in the vicinity. Just the one miss. All week long, trying to keep it at one. Picks up a seven pin and covers. Norm Duke, an 11 pin lead. He is done with six frames. Chris Barnes in a great head to head matchup in this semifinal. Who will take on Mika Koibunemi in the finals? We'll find out when we return and tell you about the rest of the PBA schedule forthcoming as well. Last year's Greater Kansas City Classic right here at the Lunar Bowl saw Patrick Healy Jr. beat up Amleto Monticelli in the wild card match. And in semifinal number one, take care of Tommy Deluce Jr. Healy met Michael Gaither in a great championship match, beating him by only 16 pins. Capturing his first and so far only PBA Tour title. Wichita State faithful rooting for Chris Barnes where he bowled collegiately. Ronnie Walchek did as well. We saw him last week in Omaha make the show. Check it in this week's Days In on the Road. We're going to Chicagoland. Randy and I and our great crew next week for in Hills, Illinois. After that, the Pepsi Open, Grand Rapids. Michigan, all leading up to the TOC, Uncasville, Connecticut at the Mohegan Sun. Regional events as well, coming your way, Arkansas, Palo Alto, and here's the Stanford campus. Richmond, Indiana, in addition to Clearwater, Florida, Shippensburg, Pennsylvania, and Moline. Barnes works on a spare here. Down 11 pins. Come on, come on. Needs to get going. That's the way to do it. They sack the 3 o'clock Eastern time. Noon on the West Coast on ABC. Another outstanding field, including Jim Furyk, Davis Love III, David Toms compete at the Chrysler Classic of Greensboro. Don't miss final out action of the Chrysler Classic today, 3 o'clock Eastern time on ABC Sports. Leaderboard. 17 under right now has the advantage over Brad Faxon's 14 under par. Tune in at 3 Eastern on ABC to see the conclusion. And who takes that PGA event? Here it's PBA time. The strike, he's got a one pit lead. 258 max for Barnes. Came in high though. Having Not what he wanted. Excuse me, Dave, having some issues on that lane. In that same spot. 3 9 10, and this is a tough split. Because of the lane pattern, the lane condition, this bug doesn't get to the spot, hooks high, hooks early, and I think Chris needs to take a giant step left on that lane. If he gets a little bit right of that spot, it hangs. Oh, it's going to be fun. A little bit left. <laughs> See what, he does, yeah. He's not looking forward to shooting this thing. 3 9 10, there's the shot clock there. Chris has fouled and done that shot clock violation before with a balk we've seen from him different delivery issues he covers it nicely three nine ten all down to the pit beautiful spare chris barnes well let me tell you that was one inch away from getting zero from going into the channel that thing was hanging on the one board but if it's a little bit left of that it chops it chops it the uh, three nine right off the ten pin just a brutal, brutal conversion. Norm Duke works on a spare. For seven, hoping for a late trip there. Boy, it's spinning the messenger, but wouldn't take either out. And he's got two pins left up. Seven of eight so far, multi-pin conversions. Tries to jack up that stat number on this ball. Will do so. Nine pin lead now, Norm Duke. In our second semifinal, we've got Koivu Nemi. He's already through. <clears throat> Six foot four inch native of Finland has made the championship round. Looking for his third ever title. Norm Duke has won 20 times on the PBA Tour. Legendary career on lane 23. Bingo. I really like what Norm is doing. He's going nice and direct. Very soft hand at release, letting the lane and the ball do all the work. 
And what has Chris Barnes done when he's made television? Well, he's only made it to the championship match in his last seven TV appearances. Thank you, Russ Tui, who, by the way, is leaving us after this week. We're going to miss him dearly. Russ Tui with us in September of 99. We will dearly miss his services. Here's Barnes, lane 24. A touch high. high. Down goes the four. Wow. That's a good time for a good break there. Boy, is it ever. Right now, the situation is simple. Chris Barnes strikes out, he shoots 238. If Norm Duke strikes out, he shoots 247. And this shot coming up in the ninth frame is going to set up his tenth. You think he liked that trip four? Trip four is probably a right-hander's best break. Look at him lay that. He is changing balls on the right lane. This ball is a little bit less aggressive than the ball he was using. Foundation frame, a big one here for Barnes in this match. Yes. 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 You know, it's one thing to make the adjustment. It's another to believe in the adjustment and execute a perfect shot. Watch this. This is a shredder. You see those eyes get big when he knows that that ball is going to be close. And the result, he's a happy guy. It was back to Russ Tui's big stat for us. Seven in a row on the TV show. This guy knows about winning on TV as well. Norm Duke with 20 titles. That straight approach of the head pin pays off again. Wow, and it looked like that ball was just a pinch left. But because of the great touch that Norm Duke puts on the ball at the bottom of the swing, that ball held line and was dead flush. Simple, two strikes. And good count, Norm Duke is going to advance against Mika Koivuniemi. Two and two. We've seen him just over the last year being in clutch situations like that. Barnes can't even watch in the background. Down goes number 10 is right. Watch this. The head pin's going to go to the sidewall. Here it comes. Rack, please, Rack, please. Just throwing wood. <sighs> what a huge break at a perfect time. Norm Duke taking a re-rack, and in my opinion, he's taking this re-rack, Dave, to gather himself. Absolutely. <laughs> After that huge shot. Good still shot. needs a strike here, and the two-pin count <sighs> on the fiddle ball. <clears throat> and he'll have himself a victory in this semifinal. Told you they are three and three on TV, head to head, these two PBA greats. I watched Norm Duke do it last night against Rick Steelsmith, and we were seeing him do it doing the exact same thing today. This man is afraid of no one. Chris knows it. He, was, he knew he was going to be in a fight. And he knew Norm was going to bring it. And we saw Chris, a couple of applause there. Class act Chris Barnes. Recognizes greatness. And for good measure, why not? Finishes out with five straight strikes at 247. He will win this match and take on Mika Kordunyemi in the final. So the seven well, I didn't need that one. TV yeah. show streak <laughs> of Barnes making the final will end. He won in Japan in the Invitational. And again, overcome by the emotions, Norm Duke wears his heart on his sleeve. Man, I'm telling you. In big matches, there's no question. And Mika Koivuniemi is 2-0 in title matches in majors. Well, and both of those are wins for majors. Mm-hmm. Knows about pressure. That hurt a lot. Yeah, there's the break he was looking for. Focus is Norm Duke. He is in the finals to take on Nico Kordunyemi. Two PBA greats head to head. One had to go down. Kordunyemi awaits the winner, and it is Norm Duke. What a battle going right down the final frame. Duke wins this.
are getting set for a tremendous final match. Number Nika Koibuniemi from Lunar Bowl in Blue Springs, Missouri. Tonight here on ESPN, don't miss a special encore presentation of ESPN Original Entertainment's critically acclaimed drama Playmakers. Catch up on the action from the beginning, episodes 7 and 8, and the last couple as well, beginning at 9 Eastern, 6 on the West Coast. Playmakers is also available on ESPN High Definition. Call your cable operator today or direct TV for more. Wow, what a match we just saw with Norm Duke. Randy and Chris Barnes going down in the last couple frames. When Norm Duke needs the big shot on TV, he seems to always come through. Yeah, he really does. And this championship match is going to be very interesting for a couple of reasons. Number one, Norm Duke and Meek are going to be playing at about the same spot on the lane, the, general, the same general area. And it's basically going to come down to who wants it more. You know, Norm Duke again told me last night, you know, sometimes you just have to make things happen. We'll see who makes things, makes something happen in the title match. You've got to make the Geico Direct Championship recap happen right now. It's been exciting so far here from Blue Springs. In our wild card match, it was Chris Barnes defeating Dennis Rand Jr. by the score of 235 to 159. Barnes just too overpowering. And in semifinal number one, it was Mika Koivuniemi defeating Mike Scroggins by the score of 216 to 181. Like Barnes, Mika's clean game was the key to victory. And as you just saw in semifinal number two, it was Norm Duke defeating Chris Barnes by the score of 247 to 217. Duke throwing the last five strikes in a row to win. That is this week's Geico Direct Championship recap. Mika Koivuniemi. They call him Major Mika for a reason. 2000, he won the ABC Masters in Albuquerque. Won the U.S. Open as well in the 01 02 season. The finals are next. Last week at the banquet open in Omaha, Robert Smith made a tough oil pattern look remarkably easy. In semifinal one, he beat Lonnie Walchek, who was struggling with a tricky oil pattern himself. Smith would then beat Mike Machuga in the championship match by over 60 pins and earned his fifth career PBA Tour title. He also claimed a very important exemption for the 2004-2005 season. A great day for Robert Smith. So Robert Smith becoming the first winner on tour this year in Omaha. Perhaps Mika Cardinelli or Norm Duke will succeed him. We'll see. Mika, you haven't won since so long. Your two victories, both in majors. This is a regular tour stop. What kind of things are you going through your mind right now? I just try to make every shot as good as I can, and I hope that's enough. And good luck to you today. Thanks. All right, Norm Duke, big shots when you did them in the last match. You were able to come up with the two strikes and then the pin count. How do you come through so well in the big moments? Sometimes luck plays a big factor because Chris made some good shots and mine were suspect, but mine hit the pocket and just happened to get him over, and I get to play Mika now. First head-to-head -head match with him on TV. What are your keys? I'm not, I want to stay outside the same frame as Mika, or everybody know how tall he is in comparison. <laughs> Looking for his 21st career title, Randy. You know, if you measure these two just by appearance, if you're just turning in, this match looks kind of like David versus Goliath. But let me tell you something about Norm Duke. Nobody has more guts and more heart than Norm Duke. Thirty-one events. Although it was a major that he won, it's been a while. Oh! That was hold because the ball was left out of his hand. Didn't appear too nervous. First finals for him in so long. Just the one TV match last year. Shall see after this convincing win. The semis. Picks up the four pin. It's not a spare. They're all playing for the exempt field in next season. It's unbelievable how much pressure is on you bowlers. Robert Smith is already in after winning. Yeah, and you know, just because you win doesn't mean you make the top 50 in points. Last year, Chris Hayden finished 62nd and won in Orlando. So with the new rules now, if you win, you're in. Has dramatically changed the complexion of this entire PBA Tour season. What pressure on every event, on every player. 21st year, bidding for a 21st career title today. Multi-pin numbers. 
just a match play. Kate. More stats break down. Maybe the real deal, Randy. Corbin, Emmy, and Duke. Duke, the higher average. Obviously, a higher strike percentage. And the spare conversion percentage in match play, a little bit higher than Mika's. But Mika threw a lot of strikes. Don't kid yourself. He struck when he had to. Real high scoring match in the round of eight against Michael Haugen Jr. This guy, no stranger to throwing X's when he needs to. We saw that in the last match. 11th all time with those 20 titles. Play a big match experience. And a 10 pin stance. Yeah, and unfortunately, that ball had nothing on it when it got to the pocket. It, it basically hit the 1-3 and puked on it. And that's why he a 10. Six goes to the wall and just, just kind of lays there. Shorter player, he uses a full approach to generate momentum and speed to the foul line. And those numbers that you see on the foul line are not because the players don't know where they're standing. Norm is listed at five. Foot four. So vastly different approach. You can see how much closer he is to the foul line. A lot of power. Throws the ball so far down lane on release. And like we talked about before, you know, his ball's going a little high, four pin, four pin. You know, he may not move. He may just throw it harder and loft it further. You know, the ball can't hook if it's in the air. So why can't more players bowl with such loft the way Mika does? Well, I think it's, it's because of the environment that Mika grew up in. You know, bowling in Europe, the front part of the lane is normally really dry. And we see a lot of Europeans loft the ball out. They try to get the ball over the head so it doesn't hook early. You ever try lofting it, Dave, when you go bowling? I don't bowl well, Randy. Maybe. Loft or not. Maybe <laughs> loft. Maybe I should try help. some more loft. I'm not 6'4", though. He generates an incredible amount of loft with that wingspan we talked about. Looking for a 72nd straight frame without an open. This is the time to catch fire. Messenger, not in time. Well, he doesn't go high only leaving the week 10, but take a look at this profile. We, we showed in the Dexter approach. Look how high that backswing is. Notice how steady the head is. Not a lot of knee bend for a guy that's 6'4". You know, I remember big Steve Cook back when I started on tour, big powerful left-hander, about 6'5", 6'6". He had a tremendous knee bend, but he didn't lock it. Steve Cook, a Hall of Famer. Thanks, Gary Cobb, John Chamberlain, Lunaville, co-proprietors. Beautiful center. We are not far from Arrowhead Stadium, downtown Kansas City, on the Missouri side. And two of the nicest guys you'll ever meet right there. And they help, seven pin goes down. That's a good spot for Norm to get his ball in, that switch zone. As strong as these bowling balls are, you're going to carry that hit nine times out of ten. In match play, a 12 and 3 record coming into this final day. Tom Darty, Mike Devaney, Rick Steele Smith all going down to Norm Duke, and none of those best of seven matches went the distance. He's had an effective run. Look at all the titles. Enormous disparity between the two. But you can't discount all that international experience that Mika has. Again, and I'll, you know, I'll say it, we talked about it before, lane conditions and the oil, the oil seem to break down much faster than normal, and it's because of the light amount that they put in the front part of the lane. Guys having to make adjustments on the fly. Takes care of his mark. Sets up an exciting conclusion, a one-pin lead. That's it for Norm Duke, bidding for a 21st title. Can Mika Korbunyemi take his third ever championship? You'll find out from Lunar Bowl. Exciting conclusion comes your way next. Plenty of energy from our crowd today here at Lunar Bowl, Blue Springs, Missouri. Our live coverage of the PBA Tour.
And 10 years greater KC Classic, what a final match we got going. Ready, let's check in with this week's Uniroyal Tire Rock and Roll. Okay, Chris Barnes is going to show you how to make the 2 4 8 10 Moves a little bit right, gets soft with the speed, and just rotates his hand around the side, trying to get that ball to dig in like a snow tire. Throws the 2 and the 8 over into the 10. Perfect conversion. Our Uniroyal Rock and Roll. This week. Through four, you saw the numbers. Three straight spares for Corbin Yemi to bring this match up in starting in the final. One pin match and the first strike for Mika. Duke has just one strike, that on the third frame. So the numbers there with a single pin left. Ah. With that loss. Lister is the rack there, but somehow the 10 pin stands. A lot of power on that ball in lane 23. Uh, there's a point where it's too, too fast and too flat, and this is one of them. Six pin goes to the sidewall, lays in the gutter, it's dead. That ball was a little flat. Mika's tendency is to get fast and to throw it. Picks up the 10 pin. Why, in your opinion, has Mika only won two championships on tour? Well, that's a good question. I don't know. I, he certainly has enough talent to have won more. It was only his third or fourth season on the PBA Tour. Trying to make some history today by Norm Duke. Standing directly in his path. Ten pins standing on a solid ball. Duke liked it. Final match, tour exemption for all of next season on the line. Come on. Spare it up, no play from here. All tied up with a spare here. The only thing other than nine spare in the strikes was Norm's first frame where he went seven spare. Mika's, all he's got is nine when he didn't strike. Next week, Randy Nine, our great ESPN PBA tour crew rolling to Vernon Hills, Illinois for the PBA Miller High Life Open. The action starts as always at one o'clock Eastern time. 10 on the West Coast right here on ESPN. Don't miss the best bowlers in the world. Vernon Hills, Chicagoland. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Somehow, Cubby fans in Chicagoland trying to recover. <laughs> trying to recover. You know, I don't live in Chicago, and I'm trying to recover from it. I mean, how nice would that have been to see the Cubs and the Red Sox in the World Series? All right. This ball has nothing on it, never quite gets up high enough in. Uh, into the pocket. In fact, it doesn't get to the pocket at all. Leaves a 2 4 5. Rule of thumb now for me, I would move a little bit right, get a little bit firmer with my speed, and just try to jam it in the 1 3. Or Norm needs to add a little bit more hand to get that ball to turn over. So he covers no opens here for either bowler in this final round. You and I fly through the great city of Chicago quite a bit being in this business. And O'Hare Airport has just been sort of quiet the last couple days. You know, after the Cubs lost the heartbreaking seven-game series to the Marlins. Wow. Ten pin. And you speak of heartbreak in Boston. Who did we fly in yesterday with? Carlton Fisk. You did? The Hall of Famer. Beautiful. He said he could not, under any circumstance, forget what just happened. Oh. The Red Sox lose. Hmm. A lot of nine spares going on here for Mika Koivu Niemi. A couple of weak tens, a big ring and ten there. Takes care of the ten pin and another mark, keeping things very close. Just a two pin match. With the Greater KC Classic Lunar Bowl, Blue Springs, Missouri, outside Kansas City. Uh, this beautiful bowling center, our second straight year here at Lunar Bowl. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, our entire crew. Live coverage continuing here on the PBA Tour. Pro Billiards next, Challenge of Champions. As soon as we wrap up this thriller.
Must be finished for hurry up, get in the pocket, and it worked out pretty well for him. Yeah, it sure did, and he did exactly what Chris Barnes told me he needed to do. I have Chris sitting right next to me, and Chris said he needed to tilt it just a little bit more to get the ball to finish a little bit higher in the pocket. That's exactly what he did. Chris thinks he still needs to do it just a pinch more, though. And I agree. Yeah. Looked a little high. high. Help on the nine. Well, Duke went the other way. He moved right like I suggested. A little bit firmer with his speed. Gets the nice break trip of the nine pin. Two pin match. Strike here. Norm can take an eight pin lead. Last week in Greater Omaha, we did not have the drama on our PBA opening day the way we've had here this afternoon. Two back to back. Very exciting matches. This one shaping up to be the same. In the pocket, Norm Duke picks right. Eight pin lead. Beautiful angle there. Looks like Norm moved just a pinch right to catch a little bit more friction to get that ball to finish harder. It was perfectly executed and a perfect result. Now Mika working on a strike. See the max numbers. He'll have a two pin lead with another strike here in the eighth. Big shot. Get the high. Oh, Just me. That ball checked early. Looked like he hit up on it at the bottom of the swing. And if you hit up on a bowling ball, they tend to roll too early. The next time we have a match with him, I promise you folks, finish subtitles. <laughs> or English. For his finish. Got to get this terminology down. Trying to finish up seventh frame. Covers nicely. Three, six, ten. All go down. Talked about the exemption for next year. Also, on the bubble for the TOC is huge. Because right now, Pilon has been saved. His last win, he's at the bottom of that winner's list. September 25th of 01, had a new winner from today's final five, taking the whole title. Pilon would have been bounced. That is locked there. Ten pin. I heard it there on oh, the day, but it didn't carry. Again, not getting the ball to finish hard enough into the 1 3 pocket. One ball picks up a little too quick on the right lane. That one goes just a little bit too far down the lane before it hooks. And right now, Norm Duke is in the driver's seat. He is working on a double when it comes to his foundation. Front. Ten pin there for Carver Nemi. However, a strike here puts Norm Duke up 19 pins, and as you said, pretty much in full command. Big ball coming up. Well, strike here in the ninth frame. All Norm Duke has to do is get good count and a mark in the tenth. He's going to be your winner. The most Mika can shoot now if he strikes out in the tenth is 206. Norm Duke with a strike here will be in the two teens. Oh! Not sealed yet. No, it's not. And avoided disaster. That ball went right through the schnoz, leaving the six pin. Norm Duke with a spare heel. Here, he'll be going at a 204 pace. He would need two strikes in the tenth and three pins. <laughs> to lock this up. Nails the six. And again, the perfect run here between these two great bowlers in the finals. No open frames. Show them to me right here. That is what is required. Mika speaks to himself in Finnish. Norm, it's all English. All direct. He's got to hurry. Look out. Ah, way light. Norman. Watch his right hand at release. Watch what it does. 95. See the finish go left of his head? And the oh, ball buddy. never grabs the lane. He dead missed it off of his hand. The only chance he has now is converting this, and that would force Mika 
to throw two strikes and count in the 10th frame. Got to have it. One, two, eight, ten. Big one. Covers. Wow, what a shot, Norm did. And with a strike here, Mika will have to double and get five to win. What a huge, huge shot. It's not over yet. All right. Since it's 196, 80, 96 or better. I'll tell you what. Let's just spare that again. Pro Billiards coming up next on ESPN. You heard Norm's advice to himself. Right down the right at it, and that came in right through the nose again. That was uh, marginal, but that's enough. Yep. Now, Mika Koi Buniemi needs two strikes mm. and two pins to win. Pro Billiards on the way. After we wrap up business, Norm Duke in the background can't watch. We know his wife Karen, son Brandon, eight years old, is watching closely. Two strikes and two. Gotta have a strike here. Ten oh, pin. No! Wow. By an inch, the messenger doesn't take it out, and Norm Duke has won. 21st career title for the great Norm Duke. Looking for a little messenger help, looking for a little love, and doesn't get it. Watch the head pin. It's looking for it. Goes right in front of the 10. Oh. And that just cost Mika the championship. What a great week. Mika Kordunyemi has not won since 2001 in the U.S. Open. It's been that long. Norm Duke won once on tour last year in that thrilling match with your close friend, Dave Traber. In that sudden death roll off, he's won another tour title here today. And of course, anytime Norm Duke is on TV, lots of emotion. Plenty of emotion as well. And he deserves it. The two class acts right there, Mika, obviously dejected. But that guy there, he earns each and every victory, in my opinion. Thank you, thank you, all of you, thank you. Remember the young man who gave the setup ball right back to Norm Duke after he had given it away as a souvenir. Hard to believe they'd have the same grip. You were prophetic, Randy. It was worth $40,000. To her title, Norm Duke, celebration time with his grandma. Live coverage of the PBA Greater Kansas City Classic on ESPN is brought to you by Miller High Life. To live simply, proudly, boldly, manly, this is the High Life. By Uniroyal, the official tire of the PBA Tour. Uniroyal tires trusted by American families since 1892. And by Bear Aspirin, take it for pain, take it for life. You went over your grandma a moment ago. She wished you congratulations. Always so emotional for you here. What are your feelings after winning the second tour stop of the season? Well, you know, first and foremost, I wanted to, to secure my spot next year in the elite field. And that made me so nervous. I, I was just everywhere. And that last shot was just awful. And, and I made despair to make Mika do it. <laughs> Sometimes it's about luck, you know. And, and today, thank you. Thank you, Nanny, for providing me with all that luck. And your dad, David, was here as well. Is it more special to have your relatives on hand to watch a big victory like this? I am, but I think it was the hat. I've been telling my dad to take that hat off for four days. He said, no, this is the luck. Here in <laughs> a lucky red hat. Congratulations. Thank you. 21st time in his great career, Norm Duke has won on the PBA Tour. And Grandma is there to watch it. Sue Gunn. So the winner is Norm Duke. Join us next Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern here on ESPN. We'll be coming to you from the PBA Miller High Life Open in Vernon Hills, Illinois. Billiards is coming your way next. It's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For the entire crew, my partner Randy Peterson, it's Dave Ryan saying so long.